how Lesotho, a southern country, ended up in the middle of South Africa. Every country in the world is either surrounded by water or several other countries, but three countries in the world break that role and are entirely surrounded by a single country. Vatican City and San Marina are entirely surrounded by Italy, and moving to the southernmost part of Africa, which is our bone of contention, we have the sovereign country of Lesotho, which is entirely surrounded by South Africa. Lesotho, which is one of the smallest countries in Africa, officially referred to as the Kingdom of Lesotho, is a country entirely surrounded by South Africa. It got its independence from Britain on October 4, 1966, with English as its official language. Though Lesotho is found within South Africa, it is an independent country with its own government, capital city, currency, language and people. The country has a population of over 2.1 million people, and its capital and largest city is Maseru. Though the country uses the South African rand, it has its own currency called the Lesotho Loti. Lesotho is a member of the United Nations, the African Union, Commonwealth of National, and a member of the South African Development Community. Lesotho is not just a landlocked country, it is South Africa locked, and the big question is, how did the country end up in the middle of another country? Well, in this video we shall try our best to give a detailed answer to that, but first, if you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn post notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. The history of people living in the area now known as Lesotho goes back as many as 40,000 years ago. Modern Lesotho, then called Basutoland, emerged as a single polity under King Moshosho I in 1822. Moshosho, a son of Mukakane, a minor chief of the Bakotali lineage, formed his own clan and became a chief around 1804. Between 1820 and 1823, he and his followers settled at the Butha Buthe mountain, joining with former adversaries in resistance against the Lifakan, associated with the reign of Shaka Zulu from 1818 to 1828. In 1833, Trek Boers, who were nomadic pastoral descendants from European settlers from the Cape Colony, arrived on the western borders of Basuto land and claimed rights to its land. The first of which being Jan de Winar, who settled in the Matlaking area between May and June of 1838. Incoming Boers attempted to colonize the land between the two rivers and even north of the Caledon, claiming that it had been abandoned by the Sotu people. Moshoshu subsequently signed a treaty with the British governor of the Cape Colony, Sir George Thomas Napier, that annexed the Orange River sovereignty, where many Boers had settled. These outraged Boers were suppressed in a brief skirmish in 1848. In 1851, a British force was defeated by the Basotho army at Kolonyama, provoking an embarrassing war for the British. After repelling another British attack in 1852, Moshushu sent an appeal to the British commander that settled the dispute diplomatically and then defeated the Batlukoa in 1853. In 1854, the British pulled out of the region, and in 1858, Moshushu fought a series of wars with the Boers in what is known as the Free State Basotho War. As a result, Moshushu lost a great portion of the Western Lowlands. The last war with the Boers ended in 1867, when Moshushu appealed to Queen Victoria, who agreed to make Basotho land a British protectorate in 1868. Following the transfer of Basotho land to the British in 1869, the British transferred functions from Moshushu's capital in Thaba Bosio to a police camp on the northwest border, Maseru, until eventually the administration of Basotho land was transferred to the Cape Colony in 1871. Moshushu died on 11th March 1870, marking the end of the traditional era and the beginning of the colonial era of Basuto land. He was buried at Thaba Bosio. In 1871, the British protectorate was annexed by Cape Colony. The Basuto resisted the British, and in 1879, a southern chief, Morusi, rose in revolt. His campaign was crushed and he was killed in the fighting. The Basoto then began to fight amongst themselves over the division of Morosi's lands. The British extended the Cape Peace Preservation Act of 1878 to cover Basoto land and attempted to disarm the natives. Much of the colony rose in revolt in the Gun War, 1880-1881, to 
inflicting significant casualties upon the colonial British forces sent to subdue it. A peace treaty of 1881 failed to quell sporadic fighting. In the Cape Colony period between 1871 and 1884, Basultan was treated similarly to other territories that had been forcibly annexed, much to the humiliation of the Basotho, leading to the Basotho Gun War in 1880 to 1881. In 1884, the territory became a crown colony by the name of Basutoland, with Maseru as its capital. It remained under direct rule by a governor, though effective internal power was wielded by traditional tribal chiefs. In 1905, a railway line was built to connect Maseru to the railway network of South Africa. When the Union of South Africa was founded in 1910, the colony was still controlled by the British, and moves were made to transfer it to the Union. However, the people of Basutoland opposed this, and when the National Party put its apartheid policies into place, the possibility of annexation was halted. The differing fates of the Sesotho-speaking peoples in the protectorate of Basutoland and in the lands that became the Orange Free State are worth noting. The Orange Free State became a Boer Road territory. At the end of the Boer War, it was colonized by the British and this colony was subsequently incorporated by Britain into the Union of South Africa as one of their four provinces. It is still part of the modern-day Republic of South Africa, now known as the Free State. In contrast, Basutoland along with two other British protectorates in the Sub-Saharan region, Botswanaland, modern-day Botswana and Swaziland, was precluded from incorporation into the Union of South Africa. These protectorates were individually brought to independence by Britain in the 1960s. By becoming a protectorate, Basutoland and its inhabitants were not subjected to Africana rule, which saved them from experiencing apartheid and so generally prospered under the more benevolent British rule. Basutu residents of the Basutoland had access to better health services and to education and also came to experience greater political emancipation through independence. These lands protected by the British, however, had a smaller capacity to generate income and wealth than had the lost territory which had been granted to the Boers. After a 1955 request by the Basutoland Council to legislate its internal affairs, in 1959 a new constitution gave Basutoland its first elected legislature. This was followed in April 1965 with general legislative elections with universal adult suffrage in which the Basuto National Party BNP, won 31 and the Basuto Land Congress Party BCP, won 25 of the 65 seats contested. On October 4, 1966, the Kingdom of Lesotho attained full independence, governed by a constitutional monarchy with a bicameral parliament consisting of a senate and an elected national assembly. Despite formal independence, the white-controlled government in South Africa played a major role in its neighbor's economic and political affairs, including supporting the government of Lesotho's Prime Minister, Chief Leabua Jonathan. In 1986, South Africa supported the coup d'etat in Lesotho, which brought Justin Likanya to power. In turn, Likanya's government expelled African National Congress members, as well as technicians from North Korea which led to significantly better relations between the two countries. In September of 1998, South Africa led a military intervention in Lesotho in the name of SADC after post-election rioting and rumors of a possible coup. SADC troops withdrew from Lesotho in May of the following year. South Africa held its first democratic elections in 1994. Since then, South Africa's influence in Lesotho has grown. It is involved with Lesotho Highlands Water Project, an ongoing water supply and hydropower project. In August of 2010, South African President Jacob Zuma led a group of investors and politicians to Lesotho, where they discussed bilateral cooperation as well as regional political development. While in Lesotho in 2010, Zuma visited the Katse Dam and addressed a joint session of the Parliament of Lesotho. South Africa's Annexation Proposals Due to Lesotho's economic and geographical relationship with South Africa, some activists within Lesotho have urged the country to accept annexation. With decolonization, Botswana land and Basutoland became independent in 1966 
and became known as Republic of Botswana with capital Gaborone and Kingdom of Lesotho, capital Maseru. Followed in 1968 by Swaziland, now known as Eswatini. South Africa hoped to get control of these three states, but the British government had made some commitments to respect the interests of the black African inhabitants, which would not be kept by handing them over to apartheid South Africa. In 2010, trade unionist Vuyani Taihali started a petition in support of annexation, saying, We have 30,000 signatures. The Soto is not just landlocked, it is South Africa locked. We were a labor reserve for apartheid South Africa. There is no reason for us to exist any longer as a nation with its own currency and army. Ntate Manyane, a charity director, cited the AIDS epidemic as a reason why Lesotho could no longer survive as an independent country. Lesotho is fighting for survival. We have a population of about 2.1 million people, but there may be as many as 400,000 AIDS orphans among us. Life expectancy has fallen to 34. We are desperate. Despite all these petitions to make the country become part of South Africa, Lesotho has no plans for merging with South Africa anytime soon. The country is currently one of the poorest in Southern Africa due to lack of natural resources. Thanks for watching this video this far as. If you enjoyed watching, do well to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.